Hey, what's up guys, Lucas here and welcome. Today's video is going to be about how I ink my digital illustrations. I am going to be using my new pack of brushes, the LP inking brushes that just dropped today. If you're watching this on YouTube or somewhere else, you can find the link to those brushes down there in the description or simply by going to lucaspeinador.com. But if you're watching this because you already got the brushes for yourself, then thank you very much. I am sure that you're going to enjoy these brushes a ton. I did this demo for you guys, so I'm going to be showing you what comes in your new pack of brushes and how you can take the most advantage out of it by following this demo. So with that said, let's jump into the painting. All right, and welcome to the LP inking brushes demo. Before we go and start drawing, I want to just take a moment to tell you what comes in your pack with the purchase. So depending on which software you bought, it comes with the brushes. This is for Clip Studio Paint, Procreate or Photoshop. You also have a nice little bonus that I didn't share with anybody else, which is this nice little PDF booklet going through the process of an illustration that I did in here for those of you that prefer to read instead of watch videos. And also, if you bought these brushes before October the 1st in the release of the brushes, you're going to also receive these 60 super high definition uh, textures that are the textures that I hand painted to sample and then use them to create the brushes that became the LP inking brushes, all right? So after you install the brushes and I am installing or I'm using them in here in Clip Studio Paint, but you can, of course, it's going to be the same in either Photoshop or Procreate, you're going to have 52 brushes inside your pack divided into these packages. You have nibs, you have round inkers, you have flat inkers, washes, textures, and smudgers. And just very quickly, before we go into the demo, let me tell you what each of these packages is meant to do. So the nibs are meant to be pen nibs. That means you're gonna use them for drawing. They have less texture than all the other ones and they are meant to be uh, used for drawing. So use them for detail work and use them small. Then we have the round inkers that are the most versatile part of the whole pack. And these ones you can use for whatever you want, but they are especially good to emulate traditional media, okay? Then we have the flat inkers, that all of these ones are flat and big brushes that are excellent to cover big areas with ink and also to produce these beautiful like dry brushing techniques in case that you want to add some texture into your work. Then we have the washes that are used for adding diluted ink or watercolor effects into your work. And we are going to talk at length in the demo section on how to use them and make these textures appear in your work. And then we have the textures which are very self-explanatory. These ones are meant to create different textures in case that you want, you know, some more traditional effects in your work. And finally, we have the smudgers, which are pretty nice. They are created specifically for the inking brushes because I want them to emulate what happens when you go and spray a little bit of water on top of your ink and it starts either smudging or it starts splattering around. So those two are very, very nice. I really recommend them. And there you go. That is what comes with your pack. Uh, if you have your brushes, uh, I recommend that you go and install them in your software. You just try them around before we start with the demo and nothing. See you in a second in the demo. All right, so now that you know what comes with your new LP inking brushes and also what each of these packs is meant to do, I thought it would be a great idea for you to understand how to use the brushes if we just walk together through the process of making a small illustration or inking a little drawing, all right? so. I was thinking, what can we do? And I think that maybe we can try with some type of like skeleton uh, monster or something like that. The reason why I prefer to do these like very rough things is because when inking, you can be pretty messy if you're inking a monster. On the other hand, if you're trying to like paint a pretty girl, standard pretty girl, you're going to to want to make as, as few lines as possible and it is not so fun. So let's go and make some type of monster together and let's ink it together. I am working in Clip Studio Paint and the canvas that I have in here is 3000 by 3000. Usually when I am sketching, I am not using the whole canvas, but I am doing ideas here and here until I decide for something. And then the one that I select 
I grab and I maybe enlarge it to cover the whole area of the canvas where I am going to make this illustration actually happen. All right. So for this part, let's uh, ink together. We're going to start with a sketch. I'm going to do something for imagination and I'm going to be using maybe for sketching the LP noise inker or also another one that I recommend you if that one is not to your liking is the LP brush pen. This one is also very good for, for sketching. I really like it for sketching. So go ahead, open your software of choice and let's get started with sketching. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how this sketch is looking. It's something very quick and very easy for everybody to just accomplish, just a little portrait and a bit of a monster look to it. So I'm happy with how it's looking, but it is still very, very rough. So what I want to do now is I'm usually like to duplicate this sketch. So I'm just gonna duplicate this layer, hide the one that I have below, and now use this one to refine the sketch a little bit. So Something that I have noticed saves me a lot of time is not to just simply lower the opacity and then start cleaning everything again. That can usually give me better results, but if I want something that is fast, then it is much better for me to just simply grab the eraser and go over it and erase the parts that I don't like. Just the parts that are a bit too rough so that I can understand where to do the improvement. So places like this and then I start cleaning again. Uh, also, it is a good idea for you to maybe enlarge the drawing just a tiny bit so that you can start putting a bit more detail. So that is something else that I'm going to do. Because it is a zombie skeleton type of creature, then you can relax and let go a bit of the anatomy and a bit of the precision. And that will also help us not only now in the sketch, but also in the inking phase to make something that is a bit more playful and is gonna give you the opportunity to incorporate more brushes. So let's go ahead and give this sketch a second pass of cleaning. Okay, and I think that we have our sketch in a nice point that we can start maybe with the inking. Whenever um, I am gonna start inking, I, I usually like to leave the sketch a bit unfinished because that way I will be able to have some freedom with my inking. There is nothing more boring to me than having everything solved in the sketch and then just go over, going over every single line that I just created in the, in the sketch with the inking. So I usually like to leave it kinda halfway there with some opportunities for me to guess some of the new things and, and some things to resolve or problem solve during the inking. So with this sketch now, uh, something that I always like to do is definitely some liquify. I think it is necessary. It's always necessary to have some liquify here and there because I find that I find that every single time that I do liquify, the sketch comes out a little bit better than what it was before. So I would like to now go over the whole thing just liquefy a bit break the parts that now are a little bit too too smooth and maybe give a bit more a bit more of a unique shape to the character so i'm gonna pull this shape out make the head a little bit bigger maybe the neck a bit thinner and already is looking much nicer I always like to flip around my canvas to make sure that it looks bo good on both sides. Let's scrub the canvas a little bit closer to the character and now we can finally start with the inking. So let's lower the opacity of the sketch, create a new layer on top and finally we are ready to start using all of our brushes. Now I cannot of course go into every single one of these brushes and tell you how I would use them but what I can tell you is that for the first part of the drawing, I would usually 
go to the section of the nibs so that I can start making the line art of the drawing. So in this case, maybe I will use my favorite, which is the LP Nib Rusty to create just the outline of the character. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Remember to always make some line variation in your characters. And if you haven't seen it, I have a blog post where I talk specifically about line variation and how I recommend that you apply it in your characters. So you can go to my website and check the blog post there. Remember that it is completely fine for you to zoom in to flip the canvas or even to rotate the canvas to fit the exact angle that you need to create those smooth lines. Something that I like to do with my inking is if I decide to do the whole line art, you can see how these lines that define the jaw, I am making them a bit thicker because these lines are very important to define the border of the character. But when it comes to interior lines like these ones on the teeth, I don't mind doing them much thinner. A mistake that I used to do all the time when inking was to try and make all the lines super, super polished. Now I have realized that it actually doesn't matter much if you have some mistakes in your inking because when you see your work from afar, that is what matters. And usually a mistake here or there actually helps to make the drawing feel a bit more natural. Something that I wouldn't do, and I also wouldn't recommend it for you guys to do, is to change brushes halfway through your line art. Because usually you can tell how the style of the inking looks like, and if suddenly I come in here and I start inking now with the ink clean, um, it doesn't matter if you do it for a little bit of a, of a detail here and there, but if you start inking a lot of the drawing with this brush, it's not going to be consistent with the rest, and. I really don't like it. I prefer to ink with a single consistent style. So that is what I would recommend you also to do. And hopefully you can see why I like this Nib Rusty so much. And it's because it just has enough texture, but it's still very clean. So it allows me to make a nice looking drawing without it feeling super digital. Okay, the first part of the inking is looking good. Let's go ahead and lower the opacity of the sketch a little bit more, flip the canvas around and see if there are any mistakes that we can correct. I don't like the position of the eyes very much. I think that they are a bit too close. So let's go ahead and erase them and move them just a bit outside. Or maybe that eye is not the problem and it is this one, the one that I should move. Okay, so I like how it is looking and now what I would like to do is fill up some areas with black. But before I do that, I'm going to duplicate again this line art to make sure that I keep this one without the black fills and then we use this new one to fill it up. So something that I will do in here is just create new areas for where I want the black to go and then I am going to fill it up with a bucket tool. This is a little bit different on every app, but usually you will have something similar working. And of course we can make corrections, like for example, thinning out these lines so that it looks like just a plain change and nothing more. Okay, so I think it has been enough work with the Nib Rusty and it might be time for us to give it a try to another brush. What I am going to try to do right now is change the brush to do some hatching. Now I mentioned in all the other tutorials that the, my favorite brush for doing hatching is this beautiful LP Tokyo because it has a very beautiful tempering and I like also the natural 
uh, slightly translucent uh, technique or texture that it has. But in this case, because I am using a brush that it is completely opaque, that is this Nip Rusty, I need to use another brush that is also opaque so that it looks good together. So instead of using this LP Tokyo, I am going to use this Fine Chisel, which is also very, very good for hatching, but it's much, opa much more opaque than the LP Tokyo. So let's go ahead and get a little bit closer and start doing just a bit of hatching in some areas of this drawing. Remember though that every single workflow is different and depending on what is the finishing or the, the style that you want to achieve, you're going to have a completely different technique and a completely different sets, set of steps. But I want to show you just how you can use some of the brushes to make a finished piece and implement hopefully as many techniques as we can in one single work. So in this case, I am deciding to shade these spheres that our character has on its neck with the hatching technique and in this case just something messy gives me a beautiful organic texture that looks interesting i'm just trying to create a point of light on the top and as i told you you don't have to worry about those mistakes check it out in here i made a mistake all the way at the start of the process and now it is as easy as just coming here and erasing the leftovers and a lot of the mistakes you're going to notice that if you make a, a more full inking you're not going to see at all so let's go ahead and continue doing this i am a bit too zoomed in right now i, I don't recommend that you zoom in as much as i am zooming in right now you can become a bit too focused on the details and those are not as important as the overall picture. So stay a little bit zoom out if you can, hopefully 100%, but I understand that it can be sometimes a bit hard to control the hand and also to see what you're doing when you're completely zoomed out. So in here, in between these spheres, I can make an even harder shadow, just to indicate that they are projecting a shadow in between each other, something like this and like that. Okay, so something just really quick, but fun to do. Let's go ahead and erase a bit of the lines that we created and complete this uh, line. I want to give it thickness. So it's not just a little string, but maybe something with a bit more body. So something like that. And in this case, that line is a bit too hard for me to make with a, with just uh, that angle. So I flip, it, I flip it around because this angle right here is much easier on my arm and wrist to make a regular line, so something like that. You can see how I was having a lot of fun around the, the drawing, adding just little dots, spots here and there. That is one of the reasons why I tell you that drawing monsters and zombies and superheroes in general can be very, very fun because you can make all of the nice little marks without having to worry of making a, a perfect drawing. And remember that you're drawing digital, so relax and Erase all of those little lines that bother you. You don't have to worry about making mistakes because you can always go back and fix those mistakes. All right, so it's looking pretty interesting, I would say. Let's go back and see. This was our first pass of inking, and now we're doing a nice second pass of inking. Let's see what else we can do before we move in to a third pass. Let's give our character another pass of liquify. Awesome, and let's see what else we can do with this character. Now, something that I think could be pretty interesting is to go down to the flat thinkers and use them to create a background for our character. So I was thinking maybe something like that. Flat Master, Flat Classic, and maybe Flat Chisel could help us to do that. But before I start filling up the outside of the character, I want to make my life a bit easier by selecting everything around the character. By the way, I am now finally hiding the sketch because now I don't need it. And now with the outside of the character, together with also these points, which by the way, I have to close because otherwise it's going to ruin my selection. So I'm just going to select black, 
back into my brushes, I'm gonna select again the fine chisel, which is the one that I was using. I'm just gonna close these little holes in here so that I can make a clean selection. And I think that will be enough. And this little line that I put in there, I actually don't like. So let's now go ahead and make a selection. So again, I'm gonna select everything outside my character together with this and this little hole. And let's just test it a second. I fill it up and yes, it is a nice and clean selection. I'm going to invert the selection, go below the character, create a new layer and fill it up with white. Now this selection right here, that if I hide, you can see that it is filling up completely the character. I am going to leave above so that below the character, I can come in and create some type of interesting mask. So I'm going to select black and I'm going to just simply have some fun by creating some, some lines around my character. So maybe we can create some type of abstract background with a nice white line crossing from side to side of the screen so that it attracts the attention of the viewer, maybe passing closer to the eye of the character. And you can see that I am using it to erase and then to paint. We can even use a bit of the flat dry to create a more of a dry brush effect. And here it is all about just having some fun with those shapes. Now I'm using the flat grimy and I'm trying to find simply a composition that feels nice, that feels natural. Uh, that helps people focus on the character, but at the same time that it looks interesting. And maybe we can make it even more interesting by adding some textures like these nice splotch fill here and there, some splatters. This one right here is the sponge tab or the ink dirt that is very opaque and can fill up spaces very fast. And I love using the ink spray to erase because it always helps to bring a bit of a special nice uh, texture into the whole composition. So I'm using it to paint in here, but also to erase. Of course, you can use it to paint with white, but my preference is to erase the ink instead of painting with white on top. And finally, we can even come with uh, washes to make sure that it feels really, really natural. I like to also erase with the washes here and there to make sure that it is not a big flat black clump, but it also has some, some nice gradients that feel natural. So I can use the wash bleed because it has a bit of a stainy texture to just loosen the opacity of the extremes of all the, the contour of the, of the silhouette, or even it is nice watch splotchy to do the same thing here and there. Now I would say that that is a pretty fun background with a nice composition. And now we can continue working on our character. I'm going to create a new layer, even one more on top of the character. So that is now one layer that is empty, another one that has all the previous ink that we created. And now this one in here, that is the mask for the white space, which by the way, now that I see in here, it is a shame that we lose those nice little sprinkles that I put in front of his face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the layer that contains the inking and I'm just gonna erase this thing, leaving those white spots visible. All right, so now with this one, you could also duplicate it if you want. In fact, I think I'm going to duplicate it and hide it again. I'm just gonna put it below and hidden, just in case that we lose something and we can continue working. Now, there are many, many ways for you to continue working on this thing and this is completely up to you. We could, for example, use a more uh, dense version of cross hatching. And then we could do with, for example, this flat sharp where you can come in here and with black, just simply start shading your character a bit more. So this is something that would give you a nice three-dimensional look if you do it with patience, something like this. And you can see how quickly you can start getting a three-dimensional feeling for your character, just simply by going and sculpting the parts where you think the shadow would be on the character. And of course, always, always 
following the flow of the character to emphasize the three-dimensional feeling of it. So you can see very, very quickly, and that is something that I really like, of course, about these brushes, that's why I made them this way. Um, you have still a lot of control, but you can create very nice three-dimensional drawings. So something like this can give you a one type of result, for example. Another result could be that you would grab something like the dry hairy and then just put this in little spots here and there. This I like to use with a bit less opacity. So for example, here I can lower the opacity of the layer that I am using. Actually, let me go back so that I don't lose this one. I can create a new layer lower the opacity and with this dry hairy in less opacity I can do the same thing but just put it in key places so for example right here or right here below the eye is another nice spot to put it and you can see how I can quickly create a bit of a wash effect but it is very delicate so I can control it very well so this is another one of my favorite effects that you can use and replicate and take for your work remember always whenever you can follow the contour and the shape of your object to create a more pleasing effect whenever you have hard spots like this one just go over the whole thing and then you can come and erase the extra parts. You can see close up, it looks a bit like a mess, but what matters is that it looks nice from far away. So something like this is something that maybe uh, I would do. And you can put it in other little spots, like for example, right here, and you can start creating a sense of 3D-ness in your drawing, a sense of, of shading. So this is something that I would probably really enjoy doing on the drawing if this would be just up to me but of course i am trying to show you different techniques so that you can learn how to use them so let's see what else we can do you could also shade this drawing with a bit more black so something that i would do in here is maybe hide the background and let's say that we have a more dramatic light so you could use the flat brushes to create that effect of more heavy light. So I could come in here and project a light from, or a shadow from his head on top of his shoulder. And this I'm doing with a flat knife. And then I can use it to erase and bring some certain areas back up. And you can do this all over the illustration and create an even more high contrast version of the illustration. So there you go, another version on how you can shape this illustration. Now we have one that would be just leaving our character with simply these lines that we already created. And they are, in my opinion, just enough to create a sense of three dimensionality and make your inking interesting. Then we have this version that I created with the LP flat sharp. And this other version that is a little bit more subtle that I created with the LP dry hairy with middle opacity. That by the way, you can also use this flat dry to create the same effect and I really like to combine this flat dry together with the dry hairy to create that nice effect all over the illustration. And finally we have a version that uses the flat inkers to create a more high contrast version and you can you see how this one looks with and without the background. Now the last thing that I have to show you guys is how to incorporate maybe a washes technique. So I am going to use this one that is my favorite, that is this lower opacity, flat dry and uh, dry hairy to complete this version. And after that, I'm going to add some washes to this illustration so that you can see how easy it is and so that you can replicate it on your illustrations. All right, so this look is ready. Now we are going to add a bit of a washes technique in here so that I can show you how I would do it with these brushes. I'm going to create a new layer and this layer is going to be just above the all the rest. So here we have the line art, then we have these little effects that are a bit of a maybe half shading. And then on top, I am going to have this layer right here. And this one we can put in multiply mode. Now, the brushes, when I created them, they were meant to be used to paint. So for example, I would grab this sponge, I would have used it to create 
all of the shading of this character and it works perfectly fine to do that. But the problem is that it works like real ink. That means that if I lift my brush, right now I don't have it touching the tablet and I come and I start painting again, once I go on top of the lines or on top of the shading that I created before, you can see how the layers interact with each other and it becomes darker and darker. So that is something that for me personally, it bothers me. That is exactly how real ink works, but <laughs> it bothers me. So I don't usually like to make the washes with that technique. But if you are not bothered by it, then by all means you can come in here and it is as simple as just filling up the parts that you want of your character with this shadow and use as many as as few layers as possible so that you can create that uh, washes effect. And you can see how very quickly with this wash sponge it starts looking very, very much like real ink, right? So very quickly, something like this, and we are having this illustration almost completely shaded, right? So beautiful stuff. And the beauty is you have it all in a single layer so you can just lower the opacity if it was a bit too much. So completely fine if you do it that way. But for me personally, it, as I told you, it bothers me that it layers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide this layer, I'm gonna create a new one, and instead of using the washes, I am going to use another brush that I like to use for the washes, which is the LP Sable, which is right in the round inkers, LP Sable right here. This is what I like to use me personally, but don't feel pressure that this is the way that you have to do it. Now with this one, I like to lower the opacity of the layer and then I start painting the first layer of my darkness. So let's say that if the light is coming into from this direction, I'm gonna start by simply covering the whole illustration, all the parts of the illustration that I want to cover in shadow from this angle. You can be as messy or non-messy as you want. And as you can see, I can now layer my strokes because this, if I bring it to full opacity, is completely black, so it doesn't bother me as much because I can lift off my brush. And whenever I want to create a bit more of a transition, I can come in here and I either select the dry hairy or maybe one of our flat brushes and I just give this some transition. And again, the beauty with this is we are working with layers. So now we can create a new layer and go just a bit darker. And this is going to give us a second pass on the washes. For this part, I'm gonna use the flat knife. All right, and if all of these washes are starting to look a little bit too digital, something that I like to do at the end is grabbing both of them. I'm just gonna duplicating and save all of those layers just in case that I need them later. And first of all, let's make sure that we are happy with the opacity of those, of those washes. It's very important that we select the right opacity for both of them. And I like it, I think a little bit lighter, just so that the character looks, um, kind of lifts up against the dark background. So something like this. And now I can come in here, fuse both layers, right? And these ones we can either believe in multiply or normal because we were using black, it doesn't make a difference. And what we can do is now come in here with the washes and start erasing parts of it, just like we did with the texture to make sure that it reads as real ink. So as I told you before, one of the ones that I like the most for this one is the wash stain because it gives this beautiful, beautiful staining technique. So here and there, just adding it a bit to make sure that it feels like real diluted ink. And maybe we can come in here and add this wash bleed also. It has a lot of texture so we can add it right here on top of that character or in the back. And if there are some parts that need a little bit of blurring, then we can use this 
nice smudgers that we haven't talked about the water smudge to just dilute this whole thing that looks a bit too sharp or the splatter smudge that does the same thing but a bit more splattery and we can use these same brushes to do the same effects if we want to for example add a bit of a wash outside the character so let's for example grabbing here something like the wash splotchy and get a bit outside of the character you know let's say that we just got a little bit messy and we just think here and there outside the character right something like this a bit messy makes it feel more natural and now again we can come in here and with the water smudge just dilute those water droplets that we are just spraying some water on top and erase them with again the wash bleed wash reel or any of these guys all right and this is how it looks with the washes and without the washes quite a nice effect i think that i uh, i like how this one came out and now i think that i am going to go just have a glass of water give this drawing um a second to rest and come back and see if we are done with our drawing a few moments later let's just add some final little touches like for example some white on the eyes so in this case i'm gonna go back and select a very hard brush like for example this fine chill set that we were using before and with white i'm going to paint the eyes of the character and maybe add a few splatters here and there And there you go, here is the final illustration of our demo. Thank you very much for watching this video till the end. I hope that you guys learned a ton, especially you guys that got my brushes. And if you don't have my brushes and you're interested in getting them, again, the link is down there in the description in YouTube or going to lucaspeinador.com. Thank you again, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.